Um, okay, so the next uh, submission is uh, the Tamara Park Neighbours. Robert, yeah, hello. Sorry, I, said, I called you Robert because I wasn't, I was struggling Jugabek. with... Jugabek. Just as it's built. <laughs> Jugabek, welcome. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, and I'd like to thank the Council for the time to make this submission. I won't go through the submission, the writ submission we um, put in, but I have some key points I'd like to emphasise uh, around it. And in fact, I'd like to start with something that a number of submitters have mentioned this morning, which is the uh, recent financial review and the shortfall of $534 million. Uh, to our way of thinking, that reinforces our submission rather than undermines it. It really comes down to a hugely difficult decision for the councillors in terms of priorities and how to cope with that uh, shortfall. And what we'd like to see is to make sure that the people that are in pain the most do not bear the brunt of that shortfall. So we'd like to uh, ensure that the facilities that are being contemplated for people where they live to keep their quality of life up or try to improve it, given that uh, there's a lot of pressure on, particularly in the east, that those are given priority over some of the bigger ticket items, which are would be nice to have if you have lots of money in the cupboard, but you know, to where we are now, um, as somebody mentioned, it is a very rainy day now. We need to start focusing on how to fix the roof rather than worry about you know, redoing the bathroom. Um, to that end, there's a couple of things that have come through uh, recently that I've noticed that um, emphasises some concerns we have about the decisions that are required in, um, in this new plan. Uh, I have a copy of the Otago Daily Times from last weekend. And one of the front page items is about the increase in annual expenditure to maintain the covered stadium. Um, the article talks about another $750,000 uh, $750, onto the current annual expenditure, which would take it close to $10 million a year annual expenditure. Yeah. Now, that's a third of the current budgeted amount for the um, North East um, Recreational Facility. That's a big chunk of change, and I'd like the councillors to try and keep that in mind when they are making decisions about priorities, particularly around the covered stadium, the metro centre, and the convention centres. Those are big ticket items that are going to take a lot of money out of the out of the um, city. And can we please prioritise those down and prioritise people's welfare up in your decision making? Um, the other um, thing that happened th last week is I was in in um, Wellington for work, and I went to the Wellington Aquatic Centre. Uh, sorry, to the Coburnie Aquatic Centre. For those of you who don't know about it, it's a 50 metre pool, eight lanes. Um, doesn't have too much extra, but it has an integrated uh, dive well in the same pool. You can seg segment it. And I was shocked at how much joy I had just being able to swim in a decent facility, something that we don't have anywhere on the east at the moment since the loss of QE2. Um, it was clean. It was heavily patronised. Eight to ten people per lane. All eight lanes were, were, were full. There was swim training, there were people just exercising. And everybody had the room to do what they needed to do and they were able to get to it at a, in, you know, easily um, without having to traipse halfway across the town through three different uh, contraflows, uh, diversions, roadworks and what have you. So um, th there is a big need to maintain that in the, new, um, in the new plan and to ensure that we get that facility in the northeast. And the final comment I'd say is that it is really concerning that there may still be... Um, uh, a idea to use that money and use it in multiple facilities. Now, the way we're thinking is that two or three poor, you know, half half baked ideas will not replace one decent um, facility that covers a lot of territory, and we can spend it all in one place and have a a good facility that people can get to from a number of areas. So, that's really the three points that I'd like to emphasise um, to support our submission. So, thank you very much. Yep, uh, Pauline. Thank you. Um, we've been told by staff quite a few times that the difference between operating a 25 metre pool and a 50 metre pool is the considerable cost difference. Would you settle for 25 metre? It, what you're talking about is Graham Condon essentially, which if you, anybody goes to Graham Condon, it's just hugely oversubscribed. The congestion in that pool is just enormous. Because you don't have much dis distance in that pool, you, you're constantly turning around. It really we, we would like to see a 50 metre pool or at the very least a 33 metre pool to give us a decent exercise facility. So I understand. So are you saying then that for the 50 metre pools work better with, and allow a greater capacity of yeah. users to 
to access it? Um, at Kilburnie, they've, they've got quite wide lanes. Um, you can pass, you can fit 10, 10 to 12 people in, that, in those lanes and they don't get in each other's way. With a small facility, you're constantly trying to pass people and Grand Condon, the, the lanes are particularly narrow. And if you're a little bit faster than that, that other swimmer, you're basically bumping into each other or just getting into you know, lane rage, which is just ridiculous. Lane rage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've seen it. <laughs> Tim. Two quick questions. Firstly, with the Graham Condon Centre, uh, the, if a new facility is put into the east, or when it's put into the east, do you think the, um, the result would be less pressure on the Graham Condon Centre and therefore it would function better? Absolutely. Okay, mm. so that 25, then that would bring the question that the 25 metre would work as long as there was less pressure. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't. I believe that what we have is suppressed demand in the in the northeast in particular. There are a lot of people who are just not exercising. So okay. what you'll do is you'll take some pressure off Graham Condon, but that has to go somewhere, and there will be what's happening now. Plus all the other people who suddenly go, oh, thank goodness, I've got somewhere close. Well, um, the second question is. With the Metro Sports Facility and the, and the Blueprint in the Central City, yeah. would you advocate for once, it's, we've got to a point where bits and pieces or the more detail of what's proposed to be in that go out to the um, public for consultation? Yes, I think it would be, it'd be a good idea. But that, that seems to be the sort of the longer term option. Um, you know, it, it may be the premier facility, but we still, if you um, look at the diagram, the, um, the Google map, shot that I, I put in the submission, there's nothing on our side of town. It's a long way to any facility on our side of town. So the North East is particularly poorly served and even uh, the rest of the East is, is a long way from the council facilities and uh, in between there's a few commercial ones but you know, there's a lot of costs that are being imposed on people. Um, you know, the, the ability to get your children to a facility easily to get their after school learn to swim is hugely important. Otherwise we're going to end up with a generation who can't swim within two or three kilometres of a beach. Thank you. Thanks. David. Uh, thanks, uh, Robert. Um, some of the earlier budget um, allocations spoke of a 25 metre pool and a 35 metre deep water, water polo style um, pool as well in this facility in the northeast. What's your opinion on that sort of uh, combination meeting the needs of the community and relieving pressure on other facilities. Yeah, I think that, that could be an option. I, I think the way the Coburnie um, Centre works, there is one main pool and it can be segmented to, to shorter lanes and, and there's a dive well at one end, but in the peak hour, the, the, in the mornings and the afternoons, I think they're open to 50 metres so that you're swimming right across. It's, it's wonderful. It's got pristine water and you, you swim over the two metre area and then you get past to the three and four metre area. It's just, it's a really good facility and it's all one big pool with some barriers that they move up and down. So, you know, there may be some creative ways to get the same amount of functionality, but you know, 50 metres is really what you need for decent exercise. I mean, people swim long distances and turning every 25 metres is, you're, you're losing a lot of that utility of, the, of their swimming. I share your, um, your appetite for a 50 metre pool, but I... I think the uh, desire for another 50 metre, a Metro Sports 50 metre pool and another one's possibly not. Just to, to clarify, the Kilburnie pools, it's truly a pool, it's not it's got all these add-ons, it's just a pool. It, it has some add-ons, it has some like um, kids place area and it has a, a, a gym facility as well, but the pool area, it's a, it's a single large pool, eight, um, eight lanes, eight wide lanes, full length and you, you, I've, I used to live in Wellington and I've used it before where you can have uh, aqua jogging in the deep end, you can have some other people doing under, you know, underwater hockey and then you still have a, a lane facility that may be shorter at less peak periods but I went there 6 o'clock in the morning, 6.30 or whatever it was and it was, it was well, well utilised. So it doesn't have say an elite sports facility and um, say physios and all that kind of thing, it's just it, a pool. It has a few bits and pieces, I don't know, or the, okay. full, the full list, but it's well worth having a look at because it seems like that would serve quite a lot of the, the, the needs in the East. Thank you very much. Good. Glenn, you've got 43 seconds. Yes, thank you. <laughs> How do you think this will uh, assist in social recovery in Burwood Pegasus, Robert, and in, in fact in the city? Um, the, the, the basic uh, improvement will be the, just the therapeutic um, 
benefit of A, being able to exercise and, and be able to get there at a reasonable amount of time. And the second one is the message it sends to the people in the East that we are investing back in the East and it, we're not abandoned. If you look at the stuff that's going on with uh, EQC, etc., there is a sense of abandonment in the East and in the North East that anything that's positive in the East will, will raise morale and, and give people the resilience to keep battling the, the problems they have to battle. Yep. Thank you. And perfect timing. So thank you very much, Robert. Really Thanks good. A lot. Cheers.